Until the 1st of February, I'm excited to be partnering with HelloFresh UK. Get money off fresh meal kits delivered to your door by using the discount link or the checkout code in the description below. Get 50% off your first box and 35% off the following three, as well as three free gifts. If you want to see more from HelloFresh UK, then check out my social medias where I've been sharing my meals the last few weeks. And what's best, if you sign up, you help support the channel and you can cancel at any time. Well, I'm starting to get a very good feeling about Ipswich Town here. It's been a dream start to the season. We've done well in the transfer window, but today it's deadline day. And Gary Probert, it's all over to you. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 53 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for transfer deadline day and a big game away at Rotherham. I'm not sure if we're playing it in the middle of the international break. It certainly looks like we are. We've only got one player away and one other ineligible. So fingers crossed we should be all right. We have backed up our start to the season from the last episode. We've been fantastic. I'm falling in love with the club. And if the director of football can just add one gem on deadline day, I feel we've got a genuine chance at a mid-table or top half finish. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can get it, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Without further ado, let's have a look at the results. Let's have a look at the transfer centre. And with 15 hours to go, let's see our director of football at work. We start in the transfer centre where there are some pending deals and potentially... Some that will be very big for this club. An addition of another scout to bolster the recruitment team ready for the next window. Another winger that we're going in for after so many failed offers elsewhere. And a youngster who looks like they might be coming in for a little bit of money. So Kean Donnelly is firstly a bit of a waste of money. He is a centre midfielder with not much potential. And they're offering to pay nearly 200 grand for him to St. Pat's Athletic. I'm not sure that's the best deal in the world. But if other things come off, I'm not going to argue too much. The one I'm really looking forward to, if we can get him though, is that man Tyler Bury. He is at Sparta Prague. It's 325 grand up front, not the biggest wage in the world, and he would be another option on that left-hand side. He's a good backup on the right too. He's just a proper decent winger, and he gives us three good ones instead of two. There's never anything wrong with a little bit of depth, and given some of the ones we missed out on, this does seem maybe a slightly more realistic target. We'll wait and see if it comes off. In terms of the few weeks since you've been with me though, not an awful lot happening. That youngster did come in from Wales and Bala. Owen Smith, one and a half ability, two and a half potential. Actually looks a decent pro though, so might get some football. One of the surprises though, is that we've lost a striker without replacing them. Ollie Davis was the backup as it stood. He's gone over to Portugal and Firenze, but they paid us about 50 grand. He did come off the bench a couple of times. He was never the long-term solution. But unless this winger comes in and then he gets a striker, it might be a deal where we end up with a smaller squad. And if we don't have a backup to the centre forward, we could be in for a pretty tricky season. So let's go and have a look at the schedule for how we've been flying since the start of the year. And it's been a really, really good start. You saw the 3-1 comeback win against Stoke. We backed it up with a 3-1 against Burton Albion. This was almost the greatest FM in of all time. After 80 minutes, we were 1-0 down. They'd had one shot on target. We'd had about 25 shots. The expected goals, I think, was nearly three. But we pulled it off in the end. Bowie, Mowit, and Samuel scored the goals. And we've got some good players in the squad. We played a few of the reserves to start with and then brought on the big boys to save us. And another young striker, Jonas Justison, came on. And he might be our backup now if Davis doesn't get replaced. He's not got great personality, his determination's poor, but he's okay. And it's an option to have. We then won away by two goals to one at Swansea. Again, a comeback victory from 1-0 down. Paul Ferdinand, that man in the Ramdoy to roll again. It is an experiment I stumbled upon. And my word, has it worked out. A red card definitely aided us straight after the equaliser. But I'm not going to complain. That man is a genius. At home to Blackburn, George Hurst scored a penalty. Briel and Bolo cancelled it out. Very good player to be playing at this level. But we got the point and we kept the unbeaten run going, which is crucial. We couldn't unfortunately get through in the cup again. Rotated side lost 2-0. We were battered. Your care scored 2 in 12 minutes. They went really strong. We just couldn't compete. So out of the Carabao Cup, 
but it was worth it at the weekend. A 2-0 win against Birmingham. George Hurst with a goal just either side of half time. With five gone in the second half, it was basically wrapped up. We bought on some late subs. We had a week off though, so we didn't have to worry. And with Rotherham on the horizon on Tuesday, we can enjoy deadline day. We can try and add a gem or two and look forward to a big clash away in the championship. A little worried about three successive away games now. And then the month ends with some really difficult matches. Sunderland, Palace, Leeds, big sides on paper. We'll see how that works out. But let's go and get through to the director of football's day. Josh Emanuel has been sold from somewhere to somewhere else. Valarenga from Huddersfield. We get 2% of that, which is £3,000. Not sure that's going to make a massive difference. The bank balance looks good, though. The deadline day is expected to be quiet. Apparently, Zach Swanson is wanted by Swansea and Jack Bonham by Everton. Let's hope neither of those leave the club. Transfer deadline day, let's go and take part. If he can get Bury over the line, I'll be happy. If he gets a striker in as well, I'll be ecstatic. 15 hours to find out. Well, unfortunately, our morning has ended in problems because Tyler Bury has rejected the offer from Ipswich, not even to go elsewhere, just rejected it. The wage budget is over, so I'm not sure why he's got a problem. There's money to spend. I'm not sure why he's not offering enough, but that is a big problem. If we get no one in, this will be a little bit of a disappointing day because once we start playing twice a week after the international break, two or three injuries, you're in trouble. Pip Chatting has gone out on loan. He's an okay youngster. Big potential. And hopefully at Orient, he'll start fulfilling it. But we have got 11 hours left. There are no offers in at the moment. And we really need to get a left winger. Hopefully, someone of attacking intent will come in. It's an afternoon that's going to be busy for Gary Prober. Let's go and see if he's got the chops for it. Well, the other young player, Kian Donnelly, is through the door. Not even got a gold star of ability. The fans are angry about someone who doesn't ever look like they'll be good enough. Only 10 hours remaining now, no first team offers in. You're starting to feel like it's got to happen soon. Loads of players have been scouted. It's very frustrating. Please, Gary Probert, don't go all Chris Casper on me. Well, I can't lie to you. I was starting to panic because with six hours to go, nothing had happened. But with five hours left, we might have a deal because I'm not just happy about a familiar name, a name that I know will fit both positions we need cover but also a player who is coming in apparently for less than a hundred grand. Now, if Ben Woodburn is anywhere near the talent that he can be, we have got one hell of a player for that price. And it'd be very similar to the Trey Hume deal, which was brilliant for the club. You can see the offer's been accepted. What is it like? 11 grand a week is the offer. We've also offered him to be a squad player and it's going to be on a two-year deal. Please, please, please accept it. Ben Woodburn, yeah, it'll do the job. Look, he's not the best player in the world. He's not standout and it is a big wage cut. So I wonder if this is going to be rejected as well. But he's a Welsh international. He's a good footballer and he's versatile. Just see if it happens. I just need the player. It is time to celebrate because not even an hour later, he has accepted the deal. 11 grand a week, £71,000 up front. And we'll have to pay the rest because he will make 10 appearances. But Ben Woodburn is part of our squad. Let's make sure we get him registered. He is in for this season and the next one. To be honest, that's a really good deal. He's a player that's not past his prime, as we mentioned with Frankie Ken earlier in the summer, and he can cover the roles we need. He's a backup striker. He's a backup left winger, and he's even a backup centre mid. I mean, he is a really good signing for this club. The director of football getting sensible players. With five hours to go, I don't really care if there's nothing else now. The only thing I want to make sure is that we don't lose any of those. In fact, Etienne Kamara and Adshi can go, but I don't want to lose any important players. Well, 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 hang on a minute, because with three hours to go, there's a loan offer in, and we're not the only ones by the looks of it. Sheffield United accept loan offers for Dipper Ed Joe. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce that one, aren't I? Let's have a look at the lad. 21-year-old Dutch striker. He could be getting me a backup centre forward as well. Two and a half star ability, five star potential. 33 and a half grand loan fee. The other clubs are Salford City in the bottom of League One. Surely you've got to come here, pal. Let's go and have a look at you. How good are you? You're good enough. It's not the same type of striker. It's going to be a very different type of tactic if he comes in, but he gives us a second option. Good personality, two-footed, great finisher. To be honest, he's my kind of player. Let's see if we get him in. Will you please all join me in putting your hands together and giving a rousing stand innovation to Gary Probert. Two deals on deadline day, both of them what we need. 
No wage contribution as well. That is a gem of a signing. It's actually rated as good as Hurst, and this might give us a worry because could we now play Hurst off the left? Play this guy in behind. It gives us so many options if we're behind in a game, if we need to play a bit differently away to a top side. Is the exact type of striker I like. You've seen it in years gone by with Ricky J. Jones and the type. He is a proper centre forward. I love it. Could they even be a front two? They've got that much ability in different areas. I am a very happy man if you can't tell. Squad registration, you're in. I think I'd already done that, but I'm excited now. Ferdinand, please go and welcome him. What's a deadline day? Gary Probert, you take a bow, my son. Well, I think I went too soon. He signed another player. Five hours from the deadline, nothing had been done. Let's have a look at Mola, who he's bought in. It's Clinton Mola from TP Mazembe. I recognise the name, though. Where was he before? Blackburn Rovers, I recognise him from. He's a solid defender. He's a solid holding midfielder. He's a versatile squad player. Four and a half grand a week wages. This is turning into a wonderful day. I genuinely didn't expect this addition as well. How much has he come in for? No fee. How have we got him on a free? I don't understand that. He's come in for nothing on four grand a week. That is an absolutely brilliant deal. Gary Probert, not only have you delivered what we needed on deadline day, you've become a hero. You're going to go into the legendary book of directors of football. I told you the AI is more intelligent this year, but Gary Probert has exceeded all expectations. Well, transfer deadline day has now passed, and I tell you what, it can't get better than that. Three players in, no players out, and the ones that have come in are first team level at least. Mola, the loan signing from Sheffield United, and Ben Woodburn. What we needed and a little bit more. Brilliant additions. Wage expenditure. We are fourth bottom of the league. So the director of football, to be fair to him, is keeping things under wraps. We are still only in our second season back up at this level. I feel we've got a really competitive squad. I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying this stint. You know when it just clicks at a club? We had it a maidenhead towards the end, that second season. It just didn't happen at Bromley, albeit we squeaked to success. Here I'm loving it. I feel like this is going to be the big moment of this save. I just hope we don't now go on a shocking run. Rotherham away in four days' time. That's what we're going to be back for. They're flying as well. They're up in fifth directly behind us. But that's who we signed Ben Woodburn for. Did they get any replacements with that money and that extra wage bill? We'll find out when we go to face them next. We're back for fitness test time ahead of a weird mid-international break game, but more good news just before it. You can see just below here, Davis has signed a new three-year deal, the latest of many to sign a new contract at the club. We are genuinely in really good shape at the minute. The fitness tests are good, nearly everyone's fit, and to be honest, the hardest job at the moment is going to be picking a bench because we're so strong, we're playing so well. Who on earth do I drop out? Let's go and find out. Well, to be honest, our decisions have largely been made for us here. A few players that are struggling for fitness or have been away on international duty. I'm not just going to throw the new boy straight in either. So it is going to be a fairly familiar 11. I think the only change from the team that started in the last episode is a Deneran in. And that's because Harper's just come back from playing for Jamaica. But I should note as well, we were wondering why Rotherham was so strong. And I forgot that in this save, we did it in the five-year review, didn't we? They'd been in the Premier League. So this is their second season back down. They're one of the best sides at this level. So they are going to be a strong opposition here. And another really good test for us. In terms of our 11, though, it's a very good one. We've got Grimshaw in goal. Swanson and Davis, the fullbacks. Edmondson and Wolfenden, centre-half. Kent, Adenaran, Mao at the midfield three. Ferdinand, still the Ramdoita. He got third in player of the month in the championship. We came third in the managers, incidentally. And then Sykes off the left, Hurst through the middle for some new big additions on the bench. Mola, Woodburn and the new centre forward. I'm going to go by his first name, Shaquille. They are all in the squad today. Akinola's out having not quite made it physically. And of course, Holtman, the left winger, is on international duty. Not sure he'd make the 18 now anyway. But this is the squad. I'm very happy with it. Now, can it do a job against a former Premier League side? Well, it really is a pretty strong Rotherham side, isn't it? Managed by Dean Smith, Matt Turner, the former Arsenal keeper. They've got Lewis O'Brien, Timothy Weir. Even on the bench, you've got quality. Sam Surridge sitting there as the sub striker. Tyrese Campbell not even in the squad. This is a good football team. Let's go and get through to the first half, see how we compete. Pick up where we left off. We're playing cautiously and on the counter-attack this season. And I know you criticise me for it a lot. But with a side that's got bundles of desire... 
and not quite the amount of quality it needs. This is a really good tactic and I'm sticking with it. Well, I've got to say with half an hour gone, we've had to be pleased with where we are. We've kept it to nil-nil. I don't think there's been any shots on target from either side. And this is unfortunately our best chance of success this year. I know we have come into games, we've scored goals later on in matches, but overall, this has been the policy. Make games boring. Make them like our cup finals were with Hemel in last year's save. And if we can do that consistently enough, we've got a chance of getting results. Turner forced into his first save of the game. I'm not sure it was on target from Mowat's free kick, but had to make sure got it round the post. That's fair enough. Mowat will now take the corner. In swing and delivery. It'll go to the back post if anything's to go by. They're following our tactic well. Hurst hits the post. Kent is off the line. How have we not scored there? Flag is up for the rebound. That wouldn't have counted. But that's excellent goalkeeping. Off the line, we have the best chance to the first half. Brilliant effort from Hurst. And at half time, it's goalless. But we are putting up one hell of a display. So let's go and tell the lads to dig in. Most of them motivated anyway. And we said this when we came to the club, didn't we? We wouldn't have to do a lot of work here because the morale and the personalities that they've got in the squad are brilliant. The only question is whether we've got enough quality if we get three, four or five injuries. I feel the director of football has added that in the last day of the window. And if we can keep at least most of the squad fit, if we can keep a little bit of form so we don't go 5-6 without a win and really lose those team dynamics, I think we're going to have a good season and maybe even surprise a few. We're staying in games. We look okay defensively. We've always got a threat from set pieces. We've got a big physical team. We've got a motivated, determined and professional team. I really enjoy it. But this is one of the best sides in the league. And I wouldn't bet against them scoring. Swanson in with a good challenge. It falls for Weir off the line. And Edmondson just gets there. Thankfully, goal line technology was not needed. Edmondson clears it. It had beaten the keeper. It hit the post and the centre-half got it away. As it's long downfield, headed as far as Kent. Wharton brings it down now for Bedace. He comes down the left-hand side. They are growing into this game, Rotherham. Maybe the physical edge, just not with us. Shot over the bar there. Surprised he went for that. Surely the cross was the better option. I'm not going to complain, though. They've only had one shot on target. But I feel I might need to make changes soon because at the moment, it's starting to become a one-way tide. Do we go long over the top to an advance forward? Because at the moment, that's what they're doing. And it nearly works out. Just over the bar, or wider the post, in fact. With 65 gone, it remains goalless. Rotherham now the better side. Let's go and make a couple of changes and bring on a couple of debutants. Ben Woodburn will replace Mark Sykes on the left. And then up front, George Hurst off. Shaquille the new man is on. He will be an advance forward. Pretty sure he's not a complete one. Advance forward on attack. Let's get him in behind. Frankie Kemp will also come off for Mola and see what difference they make. The question here is, are we going to live to regret this decision? As Isherwood is back with a corner for Rotherham. Into the last 20 it goes. Free header over the bar. The marking was not good. Let's go make another sub. We've got Adenaran struggling. He'll be replaced by Rakeem Harper. Four changes made then. One sub break left. Let's just encourage the lads. They look a little bit deflated, but this would be a really good result. And I know it's not inspiring. It's not the best to watch. I apologise. But we're getting results. We're staying unbeaten. And at the moment, we're doing the job. Swanson will have a little rest at right back. We know Trey Hume's good enough. So with stoppage time to go, only three minutes added on. It's been a game of very few good chances. Rotherham just edged the match overall. But crucially, it is a nil-nil draw. It's a clean sheet. And it's five unbeaten to start the season. So through the dressing room, we didn't play great, but I'm happy with the result. Well done, lads. Brilliant work. Three debutants will only get better in time. Now let's go and see when we're going to be back. Because at the moment, it's been a dream start. Well, I think for the next episode, we'll try and show a contrast of two different games. Because I imagine we'll have lost a match by then. We go away to lead two of the odds-on favourites to get promoted. But at the end of October, Watford and Reading are the opponents. Watford are one of the favourites to go up, should be in that top six. Reading away from home, promoted side but invested well. And it's our first game of the season on TV at the minute. So two games at the end of October. In the meantime, we've got a lot of away games and some tricky ones too. But if you did enjoy this episode, a big deadline day from Gary Probert, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think of his signings because I'm certainly impressed with them. And do you think we could spring a surprise this year, given the characters of the squad, Given the start to the season and those additions, I think we've got a chance of a really good year. 
maybe say it quietly a top half finish if you want to stay up to date and find out if i'm deluded or whether i'm actually predicting things right for once then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on we'll be back in a couple of days time with this one but we had a big transfer special yesterday from our builder nation save you can find that in the eye above as well as the start of the season there there's also links to the twitch channel the sponsor hello fresh and the football podcast too but i'll see you back here in a couple of days time it's turning into a great start with Ipswich Town, but what did we start like with Distillery? Find that above my head now. <laughs>